Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. spending the last uh, 10 minutes dicking around with my camera right yeah very exciting isn't it and, yeah I, uh, uh, that's albert reynoso as you can tell because i have right below me below him the name albert reynoso so you will always remember his name as we do this perfect timing with this by the way i just got off my only fans but we got to rush it along because i have another session uh, very shortly so <laughs> Me, me and uh, me and Jeffrey Tubin are going to do a session together one day. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, it's going to be great. Mm. Is his name Jeffrey? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. Anyway, he, oh, you know what I found out? Please enlighten me. You know how you have these these ten degrees of separation? You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I now have uh, one one degree of separation from uh, Harvey Weinstein. Oh, great. I, I hope it's... I don't even want to think about what it might be. Well, let me explain. A couple of weeks ago, I went over to... Well, what's the religious talk station? It's not a... It's not a they don't do religious talk all day long. But it was... Oh, it's... Uh, well, they own WMCA, which is all religion all the time. But then they also own this other station. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the, uh, of the station. But anyway, they, they asked me if I would go over there and fill in for a host they had because he was taking the night off for whatever reason. Right. Uh, and his name was Arthur Idella, I think, something like that. You filled in for him before, I think, right? Yeah, I filled in for him one night, one right. night. He's Harvey Weinstein's lawyer. Wow. I didn't Don't know that. Him. Huh? Don't hire him. I won't do the show again. I'm sorry. I'm not uh, enabling that sort of thing. Wow. You probably got renewed because I did such a good show. You know, I would feel guilty about that. Huh. Very interesting. Mm. That's, a, that's one degree right there. One, one degree. One degree. Harvey yeah. Weinstein. Mm hmm. So, uh, what's been happening down there in F FLA? Listen, I, I, I know you wanted to talk to me today. I, for what reason, I don't know. I don't know why you want to do these things. But, it, you know, and usually I have something to say, but I really have nothing to say. And I, I, I have nothing really, to say, too. What can I talk with Alex about? And I, I, I can't think of really any, because the news seems to be the same crap all the time. The You know, the TV series are starting to be the same thing over and over again. And I have nothing. I have nothing. Well, we have uh, 22 minutes left. Why don't we just sit here and stare at each other? No, I prefer not to do that because, as I said, I have the OnlyFans I have to get back to, so I could be losing money. You well, know? What OnlyFans are you? Do oh, you're doing the OnlyFans. Oh, of course, of course. Are you Look doing it naked? Look at that. Look uh. at that. <laughs> That's a preview. You want the real thing? You go to the OnlyFans. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I say this because uh, I, I learned about this the other day when I was sitting with neighbors having uh, uh, um, we get together and have wine and, and snacks and stuff. And uh, many of them didn't know anything about anything. Some of them didn't know there was pornography on the Internet. Uh, and then somebody Wait a who doesn't know there isn't pornography on the Internet. Well, one of my neighbors has no idea that there's pornography on the Internet and, and has no idea that it's free. Most of it's free. Or it was anyway at a time before before OnlyFans, but I was I was enlightened to OnlyFans. Somebody called it fans only, but I checked and it's OnlyFans. So I immediately got an account. Yeah. And can, well, maybe there are people out there who don't know what OnlyFans is who are listening oh, to us. I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they don't. I thought that clips for sale was the big thing. You know, I used to talk that about that on the podcast when I was on GabNet, and uh, apparently clips for sale is not a big deal. Anymore. 
Well, this is kind of clips. Go live. This is kind of clips for sale, isn't it, in its own way? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this is this is more YouTube or Facebook because there's there's nothing titillating on here. Let's face it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, you uh, explain uh, OnlyFans so people will know exactly what it is because there's some people out there like your next door neighbor who never heard of. Uh, well, well I, I don't exactly know because I haven't been on it, and I really have no... The porn that has been consumed in my lifetime, there's no need anymore for me to, to, to really involve myself. You but don't involve yourself in getting porn anymore? Not not really, no. It's I, I've, I've got a whole hard drive here with filled with it. Oh, I know. It's like 40 terabytes, right? Something like that. No, it's uh, yeah, it's forty terabytes, forty terabytes of porn, or well, pentabytes, or whatever they're called. You know what? Here's um, here, look, before we explain OnlyFans. Here's the thing about porn. It never changes. No, it's not always really. the same plot. Yeah, it's like the movie you've seen eight thousand times. Okay. Sometimes they put a little energy into it. They put a little, you know. Uh, well, there, there, there are new, uh, I don't want to say innovations, but new uh, additions to things like uh, the kinks keep changing. They just add new kinks like there's probably the, you know, there's the plushies, the, the people who like the plush animals. OK, and I'm sure if you look up styrofoam cups, there is a group for styrofoam cups. What do they do? I don't know, but I'm sure there's a pornography for it. Sexy sty styrofoam cups? Yes. Why not? Why not? Anyway, but basically you get down to the final end product of all the porn and mm -hmm. it's screwing and blowjob and coming. Not, not, but not always because there's, a, it, it, when porn on the internet started, it opened up the arena of fetishes and kinks and a lot of them don't even involve uh, uh, any sexual activity. I mean, because there's, there's one that's this, uh, this thing where you whisper I forgot what it's called. You know, people are like, oh, yeah, I really like that. And people yeah. love that. Really? Yeah. I, don't I forget know. what it's I, called. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, because it's not your thing. No. But for your thing, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But no, I, I mean, there are fetishes. I mean, it's like your S and M. But that's that's old hat. That's way back when, when you can only get it out from a well, from a magazine that you had to order for, away from. Excuse me for being old fashioned. Well, I'm I'm just telling you. I mean, you know, you're a tech guy. You know, every everything changes. Now there's now there are um, vibrators that you can activate. I don't know how by pressing a code or pressing your keyboard somehow that will activate the vibrator of the other person on the video. It's it's craziness, I, I guess a good craziness. But well, that makes I, sense. Yeah, of course, it makes sense. That Should makes have been sense. That's comedy. taking technology one step further. I came yeah. up with an idea that you could uh, like put on a suit, okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, and, and a place for your penis to fit into yeah. in the suit, and then somebody on the other end could like have sex with you, and you would feel it all because the suit would be. You know, doing the tactile feel on your only body. a matter of time. Now, now it's just the vibrators, but down the road, only a matter of time. You know, there will be a time where you'll be you'll you'll literally be able to do this, and my camera will be able to sense what I'm doing, yeah. and you will have that suit on, and you will be able to so feel. That's it. what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's not it's not far away. I'm sure. You know, and I, and it will feel just like you have the person there. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I mean, if if That's if, right. if it, all all you're ever doing with sex is you're using parts of your body and the tactile sensation on that part of your body, am I not right about that? Uh, you're you're somewhat right about that because a lot of it has to do with the psychology. It's the brain that is the sexual organ. So the t the tactile part is one part, but I mean, you you mentioned S and M. If you went to an S and M. Uh, studio or whatever whatever they're called yeah and and the person who you were there to be humiliated by doesn't humiliate you you've lost part of the thing right so it's not just the tactile it's the psychological as well yeah 
But I don't know. I'd rather have somebody there. And when it comes to porn, what I like to do is pleasure myself. That's you. That's you. Because you can if you, by the way, if you can't pleasure yourself through the porn you're watching, then it's not porn. If you can't pleasure yourself to the porn you're watching, then it's not porn for you. Yeah, but I mean, it's not porn. Right. If it doesn't, okay. the only fun. What is the only function porn has? What is it to build that you a get home? Off. No. That you get off. Huh? That you get off. From that you it. get off. Yeah. And most porn is done for guys, by the way. I don't. No, nah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that anymore. And and part of the reason I don't believe that is is watching uh, movies and series on on Netflix and uh, Prime and things. People talk women talk about porn and and Oh, and you're right. I have seen I have seen porn aimed at women. I saw one the other day where uh the guy comes home mm -hmm. and uh, he takes his clothes off and she takes her clothes off and they hop on the bed and then she nags at him for an hour that's the great thing about internet porn you can mute, <laughs> See? mute. you can have the tactile suit and then you can mute you can mute yes you don't have to listen to the other person where do you come in, in fact in fact, if they have a nasty voice, a voice you don't like, an annoying voice, you can mute and then you can put up, put up the closed captions. So you'll know what they're saying, but you don't have to hear this all the time. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, what's, that her, that it sounds like what's her name doing? Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> don't say it. Please don't say it. Uh, don't I say forgot it. her name. <laughs> you don't want You don't want to. I forgot. Mo See, in my old you age, I forgot her colleague. name. This is, a woman that, this is a woman, ladies and gentlemen, that absolutely hated me can we say that well, well, let's let's pass by this we've done this too many times right? what was her name again i'm not going to tell you oh okay but she hated me yeah, and you know in your people. lifetime it's nice to have somebody who hates you that really hates you yeah i, I have a good line of people do you have some people who hate you oh yeah really Mm-hmm. but you're so amiable you know People don't like other people for whatever reason. Hmm. I don't. It doesn't bother me. That means I don't get to be around you. This Good is driving me. me crazy. What was her name? I'm not going to tell Lynn you. Lynn Samuels. On. I don't want to talk about it. Well, let's talk about Lynn. I will go back to my uh, fans, only fans, if, <laughs> if it starts. She just hated me, and I never could figure out why. Did you ever know why she, did she ever tell you, here's why I hate Alex. I'm not going to talk about this anymore. We talked about this already. I mean, you want to talk about somebody else that hated you? That's fine. But this one we've beaten. Outside of the fact that she the always said, she always said I didn't pre do prep. Yes, you should, you're still talking about her. Yeah, yeah. not going to happen. I'm obsessed. Well, obsess over something else. Oh, okay. Uh, who can we obsess over? Was there anybody else that hated me? Just about everybody in the building. Okay, fine. No, no. Is there anybody uh, else that hated me? I don't think so. You know. Oh, I'm sure there were, but I, I they wouldn't tell me because I worked with you. You won't, yeah. So, hey, that, they don't oh, like I was you. a pleasure to work for, wasn't I? Most of the time, yeah. I think I was at that when point. I, at that when point, I, when I got the saddle on you, yes, you were. We know what happened is. See, I was a big deal in San Francisco. Okay, would you agree with that assumption? You were you were a big deal in radio. Period. From from uh, your history. Really, it's very nice of you to say. I never oh. figured, felt that way. You know, as you're well, doing it, you starting never... starting in uh, in New York and doing the doing the. Uh, what I think is a groundbreaking talk show on FM radio when nobody was doing anything like that at the time. Although I, I, I've heard other people claim that they started that, but I don't, I don't believe so. I can't put a date earlier. Well, let's that. say in commercial radio. Right, okay. Where it was harder to accomplish because yeah. you had to get past management in commercial right. radio. There was a station here, WBAI, that was very lefty, you know, Pacifica Foundation station. And they did a lot of kind of the stuff that I was doing, only I was doing it. Somebody said to me, why don't you go over to WBAI and work? And I said,
because that's not a challenge. The challenge is to do it where they don't want you to do it. Right. You know? Uh, and uh, that's how I felt about uh, Alan Combs when everybody would go, oh, Alan Combs, what kind of liberal is he? He's over at Fox. Well, what better place for a liberal to be? And, it, and I thought that was a very brave thing on, on Combs's part. Yeah. He, he didn't have to work at Fox. Well, he liked working at Fox, but you know. He, but he was their house liberal, and he felt that somebody had to speak for the left, you know. So I felt that way in the early days. It was I when I was on a radio station, I and it was a rock music radio station most of the days until right. it finally went all talk. That my job was to represent the very people who were listening to that station, the young people. And, and none of the stations were, were really going after young people and, and satisfying their needs. So, Hence, you were the youth guru. I was the youth guru, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I went to San Francisco where I became the king of comedy. They always find some term, some name. And where were you when you were the man you love to hate? That was Houston, Texas. Oh, that was Houston. And was that after or before you were James Yeah, I was Bond? a right-wing talk show host there. <laughs> How did that work? Until I met up with Timothy Leary. And I, was, I went into this interview with Timothy Leary saying, I'm going to get him, man. I'm just going to nail him. And he, he was so pleasant and so, <laughs> you know... That well, he why, just, why did you he, want to nail he, him? That within a couple of weeks, I was doing LSD. And the next thing you know, the whole nature of the show changed. Hmm. Why, why did you want to get him? Because, you know, he was somebody to get. He was the, he was the guy telling Oh, just kids for the to, sake of it. Yeah, he was telling kids to use LSD. Do you really think that's good for them, Tim? Yes, I do. And <laughs> yeah. now we know it, it's, it's probably a good thing. Expand your mind. Don't overdo well, it. Well, I mean, the trouble with the trouble with LSD in those days, it was a very good drug. I had been interested in it years earlier when I was living in L.A. and I mm -hmm. was in the Navy, and I read an article in Playboy about LSD and that they were doing these these tests of it at out of UCLA. Right. And so I tried to find out where I could join up to try it because. This idea, because Aldous Huxley had written, written Doorways of Perception, mm -hmm. which was about, you know, this sort of thing. The See, Doors of Perception. It was the That's doors? where the Doors got their name. The band. I thought it was the Doorway of Perception. Oh, it was the Doors of Perception. Oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah. the Doors. The Doors of Perception. Anyway, uh, he wrote a whole book about using, I think it was, was it LSD or was it just, well, psychedelics. Yeah, right. Okay. And I wanted to try that. I liked something that would expand my mind, that I would, you know, that also would sort out a lot of my problems, mm -hmm. you know? So I, when I finally did LSD in later years, uh, I made sure that I had people around me as guides to kind of keep me grounded. And I took it, and I, every time I took it, I tried to solve a problem within me. I used it very therapeutically. Really? Well, like what problem would you solve? Oh, uh, I was a hypochondriac. Well, that didn't work. Well, no, it, it wears off. Oh, it, <laughs> it was a time off. where you weren't a hypochondriac there right after you did LSD? So for like 10 minutes after you came back from the LSD trip, you're like, man, I feel great. Oops, not anymore. Yeah, no, but I, I mean, no, I, but my I, hand hurts. I think the LSD <laughs> stuff worked for quite a few years, you know? Hmm. And then I started becoming worse. As you get older, you become uh, a, what a cartoon of yourself. Like I'm more a cartoon of Alex Bennett now than I ever was. Oh, you could not be any more of a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, Harry Shearer told me a wonderful thing about doing impressions of people. Mm -hmm. He said it's much harder to do an impression of somebody when they were young. Mm than when they were old. That's why we appreciated this guy, uh, uh, Thomas, up at uh, SCTV, because he did a young Bob Hope. Right, right. And then he could do an old Bob Hope. Mm-hmm. You know, but as you get older, you become... And that's something. 
Huh? Yeah, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he, but that's the old Bob Hope. Do the, the young Bob guy? Hope. Do I, don't the, do, I don't do a young Bob. I only do the, in that something, Bob Hope. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something. You know, I got to tell you, I, and I was thinking about this, that I was going to be talking to you today, and I, I should bring this up, and I bring it up occasionally, but you don't do anything about it, but that is this guy here, there, um, uh, here, let me scratch that beard of yours there. You feel it? It got the suit on? <laughs> anyway, uh, where, where was I? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Old impersonations. Oh, you were the first guy I ever knew who did an impersonation of Donald Trump. Yeah, well, it was, it, a, it was a, uh, I don't know if it was an impersonation, but it was, uh, it was my take on Trump at the time. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it always made me laugh. Because nobody did it back then. Nobody now, was doing it. There are so it. many people that do a great you, Donald Trump. You know what I hate, though, is when I watch, like, uh, Seth Meyers or Stephen Colbert, and they go into their Trump impression. They and they're to. terrible. They're ah, just they're terrible. I mean, your Donald Trump was the Donald Trump impression that all others had to be judged by. Oh, I, well, that's that's way too much uh, credit. I'm not that good a, uh, a, a guy that does that kind of thing. No, not at all. Really? I, I appreciate you saying that. That's nice. I thought it was... It was dead on. It always made me laugh. Well, because nobody did it back then, and he was he was starting to come up, you know, in in the scene in the political. Well, scene. I think he was already doing The Apprentice. He certainly was doing The Apprentice. Yeah, so people knew who he was. But he was staging himself to to go into politics, and there were more stories about him at the time, and so he was ripe to be uh, to be impersonated at the time. Yeah, I don't want to say mocked because I didn't mock him. I just no, you didn't mock him. I wouldn't mock. Anyone. Why do you think I was laughing? It was because you were mocking him. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't take credit for that. They may come and get me if they win again. So remember I when I questioned him being a billionaire and said I would give him. Yes, you did. Bring your billions here and, and put them on the table. Put a I billion bet. dollars on the desk here. You know, go down to the bank, write a check, cash the mm -hmm. check. We'll have somebody downstairs with a hand cart, you know. Bring us a billion dollars and just put it on the table here to prove it, prove to us that you're a billionaire. He never did it. Oh, and he didn't do it for Letitia James either. Can you believe it? You no, know, he, he, he can't do it for anybody. The mm -hmm. only money Donald Trump has right now is the money that people send him. Yeah, for his sneakers and his Bibles. Well, and but also just, uh, you know, all that money that people sent him for his campaign, legal fees. Yeah, why are you sending a billionaire money? I never, I never could figure that out. If he keeps saying he's a billionaire and he's got plenty of money, why are you sending him money? Forget about the fact that he's asking for it. Forget about it. If he's got that. billions why of dollars. Why are you sending it to him? If he's got billions of dollars, why is he selling sneakers? Yeah. You don't hear Elon Musk saying, I need billions of dollars. I got to have billions of dollars. Help me send up my next rocket. You know, right, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. you never get that from Elon Musk. Uh -huh. You know why? Because he's truly a billionaire. Yes, he's got billions of dollars. That's why. And, I, uh, I don't think uh, he, uh, Donald Trump has two nickels to rub together, as they say. He doesn't really need two nickels to rub together because he will be taken care of by all the people who like what he does and like his ideology, so he doesn't need it, you know. Yeah, but his current product is simply Donald Trump. It's always been Donald Trump. That's always been his product. He's never had much more than that. Well, he used to sell his name. They put it on buildings. That's Donald Trump. That's yeah. his product. And now they're taking them off because that, that association and that name doesn't carry any weight with it. No, but, but who else has that ability to do that? Anybody? I'm trying to think if there's anybody else whose name was just simply the the product. You used to have you used to have guys like Ziegfeld and uh, Astor. Yeah, yeah, but they but they uh, Ziegfeld put on shows that people paid money to come and see, yeah. and Astor had billions. 
you know, a lot of money, or millions maybe in those days. But he had a lot of money. In fact, he built the building I'm in right now. Right. You know? So, so he had stuff he did. Trump doesn't do anything. He just sells his name. Well, a lot of a lot of celebrities do that now, and maybe based on him starting it. But look at all the celebrities. You know, Beyonce's got all these products. Yeezy's got these products. Everybody's got products now with their name yeah, on. Yeah, but they're, but they 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 are performers who sell their name. They are. They're licensing you know, their they're name. They're licensing like their Trump. name, but they they are in the entertainment business. Donald Trump never was. Uh, Unless you're, you're telling me Donald Trump's not in the entertainment business? Oh, that's very wrong. That's all. That's well, the we'll only business. We'll have to get into that it? next time because we've just run out of this time. Oh, good. I got to go to my OnlyFans. I got to make some money. Yeah. So uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks here. Yes, you will, and I'll be I'll wear the same shirt because I like this shirt. Okay. Well, I'll wear this shirt. Okay. Okay. Notice this all is right. a KML. Oh right, where, was that where, where you were hated? The guy who you left to hate, or no, what was no, this? No, no, no. That was that was where they started loving me. Did they have a slogan for you then? Uh, for me? Yeah. No, no. In your comedy, you were the guy doing. in the morning. I think guy that the was morning. the name. Yeah. That's, hey, that wants like, you to jump off the bridge. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Albert Reynoso. Thanks, Albert. You. Hey, we'll see you later. Now in its 10th year, this is Gadnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. She used to work with me on the radio for years. And now we, now we just have fun and banter on our own. You know, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, occasionally I'm saying, oh, you're Alex Bennett from San Francisco Radio. What's Lori doing? Oh, really? That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I get that all Just, the time. Yeah. <laughs> and do they say, what's she doing in Florida? I was looking at some uh, Republican primary returns. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, Florida, it, see, I, I have a policy not to talk politics with my friends or, I, you know, don't ask them how they voted um, because it's not my business. And uh, also, I've seen it spawn so many arguments. It also might reform your opinion of them. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that's almost it's almost impossible not to. But um, I did find out once that a longtime boyfriend of mine had consistently voted Republican and never told me, and <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. But I mean, it was none of my business, and he wasn't—he wasn't ardent about it. You know, he, he just—that's what we had. Well, I don't mind. See, I don't mind if a Republican is a staunch conservative. Okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. at least they have a philosophy of life that guides them. Okay. Yes. Unlike yeah. Donald Trump, who isn't a conservative, he isn't anything. And you're right. So <laughs> how? A, and I know conservatives that hate Trump. Yeah, because they don't consider him conservative, you know. Well, and and the oh, and I'm watching a documentary on the Clintons. Um, it's available now on Netflix, I think, maybe Prime. Uh, but a, a, a uh, documentary on what? On the Clintons. On the Clintons. On, I think I watched he, that. Yeah. And he uses the phrase Bill Clinton does, "Make America Great Again," and I thought, uh -oh. Trump, that thief. He no, stole no, his friend. Oh, so was Ronald Reagan was a thief. He made it up. <laughs> his whole so campaign a few years ago was make America great. Mega. Yeah. <laughs> Again. As yeah. Though, you know, I remember years ago, um, uh, uh, Rosalind Carter mm -hmm. was asked by somebody interviewing her. And they were kind of a Christian, so they asked this question, have you been born again? And she looked back at the woman and went, no, I got it right the first time. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's well, the way I feel about conservatives. No, I got it right the first time, you know? Yeah, well, and there are so many euphemisms um, that are used by people who've had 
uh, who have a strong commitment to their faith. And when a born again, saved, um, what is it, a salvation experience? Well, there are what I'm saying is it's kind of like being uh, whether you're asking whether you've been born again, make America great again. Well, America isn't great. Right. You know? Or, you know, or when exactly was that? <laughs> the make of, the, when was America great? And is, what are we trying to Go simulate? back to, yeah. 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 Right. We and, want to go back the, to the politics of the way they were in 1850. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Right. Just, you know, when when sl former slaves still knew their place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. The glory days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we were talking about, we were talking about, uh, uh, in the last time we were talking about, you know, growing up and, you know, and, and having fights with your parents and all of a sudden your parents don't know anything and you know everything. All right. right. You know? Yeah. And, and how eventually you realize actually how smart they are and uh, yeah and my as, and as i say you know I'm, I, I i thought my father was really dumb and then uh, as years went on he got smarter and i don't know how that <laughs> happened you know must have taken some crash courses but but you know i uh, i think that when you're growing up it's a it's there's a period of time there that i don't think any parent can deal with I mean, I Probably. think it's almost impossible. Uh, and it, if, uh, it's different for a guy than it is for a woman. A woman is going through suddenly getting periods and doing stuff like that and uh, beating off boys with a baseball bat. You know? <laughs> and, and boys are growing up having all these conflicting feelings, you know. Yeah, yeah so, like, uh, do I be a gentleman? Do I be a horn dog? Now, here's the Can big I question. Help? How old were you when you stopped being a virgin? 21. Really? Yeah. I was a late bloomer. Well, I had the same boyfriend, um, and we had met in the church, and so we had the same kind of view of wait till marriage. Um, and But then we started doing some things, and I just got tired of it because I went to college and I didn't want to just hand out my virginity to some guy I was like, met in You weren't sociology. going around saying, anybody interested in taking my virginity? Yeah, I've got something for you. Um, but, but I thought I, I wanted it to be with him because he'd been such a significant person in my life. Yeah. And so um, I, he came down to visit me at school, and I said, look, next time we get involved in this heavy petting, I'm going to take it as a signal from you that we're going on full tilt that we're doing that and I knew his body so well and we knew each other's you know what turned each other on because we've been just the heavy petting thing uh, for can probably you, two you, years. Going, you were going as far as hand jobs? I think so yeah oh, okay. yeah 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 okay. well, right. blow jobs too uh, but really how, yeah, you, the, how you go hand job blow job but I'm not going to have sex I see that's beyond yeah, me. Be, is beyond me. It, be, it just became ludicrous to me, and uh, I said, "This is, you know, who are we kidding? Are we technically? Who are we trying to please? Are we trying to please God? Are we? What are we doing?" But I really wanted to, you know, seal the deal with him, and he thought we were going to get married, which is he said why he took that course. But I just brought him right to the edge when we were heavy petting. Because I knew what the edge was, and I then I stopped with the heavy petting, and nature took its course. Yeah. And yeah. So, so um, you were you were twenty one. I was nineteen. That's pretty late for a dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. generally, I hate to generalize, but yeah. yeah. And was it with someone you uh, had dated for a while? Yes. Or you cared yes. about a lot. A woman I dated for a while, and then she got pregnant. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great way to start your sex life. Well, and then she got pregnant. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. You didn't use any contraception like condoms? Why? <laughs> <laughs> They're just so uncomfortable. If you feel like you're like going to have raincoat. an orgasm, you pull out. Okay. 
which is no less than reliable. It's not that it's not as reliable as a condom. Right. And not as and reliable it, as not doing it at all. I mean, you right. gotta remember when I did it, there were no pills or anything. There were no contraceptive pills. There were no birth yeah. control pills. That was pre birth control, yeah. And so anyway, uh yeah, it had been somebody I was going out with for quite a while. And uh uh, we did it in the back seat of a car, and it, I don't know whether we really did it then, okay? Because I couldn't tell. You know, <laughs> I, let's face it, I was inexperienced, okay? I don't right. Know. Did you have sex? Well, I don't know whether I had sex or not because I've never had it before and I never had anything to compare it to, okay? Well. So the following <laughs> Monday, she came over to my house after school. My parents were at work. And they we consummated it. Well, that was yeah, that was a better way, I would imagine. Yeah, it and then you couldn't stop us. Car. We were we were we were like little rabbits. Well, same going here. At it all the time. After we crossed the bridge, yeah. it was a free for all. Now here's the question: See, how was it? And my answer was, well, since I had never had sex before, it was the best I ever had. <laughs> That's good. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty good because we had such intimacy, emotional intimacy. We'd been going together. Not, oh, we had a couple of breakups, but for essentially six years. Okay. And, and so it was, we had such an emotional bond uh -huh. that it, I felt good about it. He did not. He felt like we had violated God's law. And uh, he didn't. Have he, you, have you know, you he still wanted to do it all the time, but yeah. Have you talked to him since? Oh yeah, we talk now. Um, okay. Not so often. He doesn't feel that guilty about it now. No, but okay. get this: one reason I have an issue with my I've, I've had issues with my mother. She knew that he and I had a connection, mm -hmm. and yet we would break up frequently and then get back together. And it became kind of a cycle, especially once I went away to college. And so, uh, while I was away, uh, she had a, she was in real estate, and she had a client who was a teacher at the high school, and she fixed the woman client up with Brad, with my boyfriend, and I just felt so betrayed because if um, yeah, why would you do that, mother? Why? Why? I mean, she knew that he I, he and I still had a thing for each other, and she introduced him to the woman he married. He ended up marrying, and that really stung. Man, that 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 hurt. And uh, I I held on to that for you a gave while. yourself I up for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's what. And <laughs> he asked her. She asked him. How many times? First of all, she made a big deal out of it, about the losing virginity. She's a, she could be overly dramatic, and uh, so she asked him how many times we'd had sex, and he said maybe five. And then my sister, knowing what he had said, asked me independently, um, "How many times did you and Brad had sex?" I said, "Um, I don't know, seventy-five." 50, 75, which is different than five. It's different than and, five, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, that that was weird. Because once you do it, you don't stop doing it. You, you no. In the very beginning, when you give up your virginity, you're going for it. My only problem was that after I broke up with that girlfriend, I wondered if I would ever have sex again. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And, well, yeah, it is kind of a, a milestone thing, and yeah. you don't know what comes after. No, I can't, but I can't tell you whether it was good or not because it was the best I ever had up to that point, but I had nothing to compare it against. Okay? I mean, I've had yeah. some, I've had sex with some women who I could tell you who they were, that it was just phenomenal. Okay. Yeah, but that was later on in life where I had a standard to, to, you know, compare compare it against. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had there was a guy that I didn't find that attractive, but he was really fun, and so I date. You know, we would go out and do things, and he was an interesting, very interesting guy. Our dates were very offbeat, like we'd go to uh, feng shui 
seminar and and they teach us about it and then we go on a walking tour of san francisco and they point out examples and then we'd all end up at a chinese restaurant for a communal dinner i thought that was a very innovative date mm -hmm. and uh yet i didn't i wasn't attracted to him physically but we got a little stoned one night at his house and uh he went south um <laughs> with his you know with his how, mouth. how you describe it he went south okay <laughs> Or, or I mean, of the equator, the yeah, navel yeah. being the equator. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, we didn't have. Did intercourse. he find any penguins down there at all? <laughs> no, the smell was too bad, so he knew they were there and avoided them. Yeah, no, right. I meant the penguins. You meant yeah. the penguin smell, yes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was. Um, it was like the best orgasm I've ever had. You, and to this day, did, you can say that? Huh? At this what? To this day, Juncture? you can say it was the best orgasm? To orgasm? this day, I can say that. Really? Yeah, it was phenomenal. And yet, I didn't have that much interest in dating him, you know, and I wasn't going to keep dating him just because he <laughs> gave great head. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, <laughs> You know, I, I, I think that that was back Wait, Isn't that, was that a good only, reason to keep dating him? What kind of? Yeah. Yeah. But and it didn't ever happen again, um, because I felt that that was misleading. If I wasn't interested in him, that was def definitely misleading. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was still memorable. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, I'm trying to I'm uh, trying to remember if if now the first time I ever had sex, I can't remember whether it was good or bad. You know, all yeah, I and know, that's fair. It yeah. made pee pee feel good. <laughs> you know, that was it. You know, that's what you're searching for. I mean, guys, I think, are on a different level, too. Women are very protective of their vaginas. Okay, this they treat is them true, like. Because pregnancy. Well, the threat of that, pregnancy. Well, that, the fear of pregnancy is probably the greatest mitigating factor in women holding guys off. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and once the birth control pill came around, that was no longer a problem. That's but up right. Until it that the game. point, it was. Yes. Uh, and uh, but it, it, they always treated their vaginas like, hey, this was some kind of treasure, and I'm not giving it up that easily. And guys, yeah, Fort went, Knox. Guys went, I don't care where I put my penis. You know, I mean, guys just they just need their penis to be gratified. Right, and you used to say um, that. There's a drive in men to inseminate the herd. Yes. And yes, I think it's, you are it's, right. It, 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 well, we're animals just like any other. Face it, folks. Yeah. Don't try to argue the fact we are, you know. Animals. And uh, our job, like a lion, for instance, is to inseminate the herd. Yeah, and when you, you know. said that, I thought maybe it was just like an excuse guys were floating. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. Yeah. And that makes it complete sense to me now. You know, I wish I could be a guy for one day and understand that relationship with the penis <laughs> because I don't completely understand it. Like what makes a, a happily married person um, who has so much to lose um, risk that for, you know, a role in a taxi? I, I well, you know, I yeah. often like to tell the story. Some woman, I think, called our show in San Francisco and said, "My I found out my husband is cheating, and I'm thinking of leaving him. Do you have any? Do you have any advice?" And I said, "Don't." I said, "Let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you still have a good sex life?" And she went, "Yes." I said, "Do you still get along?" She says, "Oh, we're, we're, you know, uh, hunky dory, soul soulmates, you know, whatever." I said, then don't. I said, the only reason you wanted to leave him is your own ego. You know, yeah. because he was having sex with somebody else. I said, but don't take that as an insult. He's a guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, I do think that men raised in the church, by that I mean, let's go with the Assembly of God, mm -hmm. I think have a little different... They, they have more uh, restraint because there's such a huge moral 
agenda attached to having sex or to being adulterous that that I think that that keeps a lot of guys it gives them it gives them enough pause that they don't do those quick temptation things yeah not all of them I've known some um, really infidelity r rampant in some churches mm -hmm. but that's you know that's uh, it, it's, it's all I think a lot of it has to do with the way you were raised if you can and your parents had a good marriage didn't they, yeah, they, had a, they, they well they argued a lot you know they had their fights my father may have cheated on my mother at one point you know I don't know exactly I'm adjusting the color of my face here there we go oh <laughs> oh, oh you're it was, looking, it was looking a little pale so you rosied it up. No, but my my father, I think, cheated on my mother. Uh, what? At one point, I think. What? But I'm not. Do, was it was someone you know, your family? It knew? was his cousin. Really? And like she was. Twice I, I don't blame him. She was hot. <laughs> she was a hot cousin. Yeah. I had a hot cousin too, but I didn't go there. I mean, <laughs> I was hot for her daughter, who was my, I guess, my. Well, my she she was my father's cousin, so what would that make her? Oh, her I never mom? understood the twice removed stuff. I never understood that. I, I never uh, paid attention to it. <laughs> yeah, but and well, yeah, in small towns in Southern Illinois, the pool of dateables is so small. I am sure people end up dating and marrying their cousins, um, maybe with knowledge of it, maybe without knowledge of it. So that yeah. that could be, but well, you think and and was it like a one-time thing? Was it a long-term thing? I don't, I don't this, know. I really don't know. I just know it became a bone of contention, shall we say? A boner uh, of contention. A boner of contention. <laughs> uh, a bone of contention between them. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but they, they never divorced. You know, they always stayed together. You know, and not yeah, for the I, sake of the, the child. I was already grown up. You know, oh, okay. But I wasn't growing up when this happened. I don't know if it happened. I just seem to think First, it did. Have know. have a sense that it did. Yeah, because when you're a kid, you don't know the the rules of uh, of dating and sex because it's not a part of your life. And uh, I remember our aunt and uncle came over, my mom's brother and his wife, mm -hmm. and we were thinking of sleeping arrangements and. Uh, and I said, well, you know, and such was it that uh, we needed room for one more person. And I said, well, Aunt Joy can sleep with Mom and Dad, you know, <laughs> not realizing that that probably wouldn't work. And but I was a kid. I was like five and everybody kind of chuckled and I didn't know why. So I thought someday well, I, I'll you know, understand. I, I, I got to tell you, and, and uh, I know as a woman, you probably would disagree with me. Maybe not. You're different than most women I just think that two people marrying especially when they're young and I say young 20 early 20s who are expected to spend the rest of their life with this person as their only sexual mate mm -hmm. is a bit asking much it is you a stretch know, it's, it, it puts a strain on the relationship that it shouldn't have and it should be accepted that if your husband goes out and cheats on you, and I don't like the the term even cheating, has sex I with another person, yeah, that you really shouldn't take it personally. It's not your well, yeah. fault, and it's nothing wrong with you, and it's just that, as I told one of my, uh, um, uh, my as I told one of my wives, it's not that it's you, it's just that she's just another woman that's all you know she's yeah she's what guys used to refer to as strange i got me <laughs> some strange i heard that phrase i'm gonna get me some strange yeah <laughs> but there's nothing more exciting than fresh sex a couple of times later probably sucks but in the beginning it's you know <laughs> you've scored and boy it feels good and Everybody's it's having Disney a World. wild old time, but about the fifth time it may be terrible or boring or whatever. 
but it is different than the woman you're married to. And your relationship with the woman you're married to should be different in that you have more of a, well, relationship with each other. You know? And commitment, yeah. And this other person you're having sex with is just somebody. I, I, I said to one wife once, I said, she said, how do you think it makes me feel and look? I said, how do you think it makes the woman I'm having sex with feel and look? I said, she knows that after I have sex with her, right, I'm going home to you. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And, and I think actually... I'm probably being more disrespectful of her than I am of you because I'm that coming back to you. Well, the, the reason I've never had an affair or really uh, cared to is because it involves too many hurt feelings. <laughs> the potential for hurt feelings is too great. Well, you, you, also know, have I mean, to, you also have to do one other thing. You have to keep track of your lies. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know. Where's the spreadsheet? <laughs> Gee, I, I just look here. I, I need. I got. I gotta wear glasses more often now. Oh, don't see, I, I wear look, contacts. Don't I look don't goofy you, with? Well, oh, you I, look. You look distinguished. You look like a pundit. A pundit on CNBC. <laughs> yeah, but you have to take yourself real seriously too. Yeah, but uh, well, you know, uh, I need a more and more. I need. I, I'm using. Have you ever, I'm using a cane now. I know, but you'll get it panache, man. Get one of those ones with like a fancy duck on the end. I'm, or I'm something. thinking of doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but something the, with style. The reason I I uh, I'm using a cane is really I'm afraid of falling. Yeah, and, and that and, once you've taken a big header or two or six, oh, like I I'm have, taken about three um, in the last two years. You know. Yeah, and, and I, it, 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 I'm now paranoid not to have a cane. Yeah, and don't grab onto a, a hall tree, you know, those things that you hang your coat on, yeah. because they're not anchored to the ground, as I have no, found they're out. No, they're not. They're yeah. <laughs> not. Hey, it's listen, a, now we've run out of time. Boy, I really enjoy this, you know? I, I, ben, I look forward to it every it, time we do it. it. I, I, I'm getting a little tired of doing this internet crap. The only reason I keep doing it is so I can play these things with you and Farnham and my old producer Albert and uh, a bunch of other people that I talk to from time to time because, quite frankly, this is just enjoyable, you know. Exactly. It's like we get we get a visit. <laughs> well, it's as though we were doing a Zoom visit and not sitting here and doing an interview or whatever. But that's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. And she will be back with us again next week. Right, Lori? Absolutely. And there yes. she is in beautiful Florida. I don't hear any birds chirping today. Well, do you hear my my neighbor is a parrot head. He's like an official parrot head. The people that follow Jimmy Buffett all around. Well, they can't follow him anymore. But anyway. No, no. But yeah, yeah followed. And, and so we frequently hear um, Jimmy Buffett on a loop. But oh, okay. But yeah, maybe I, I can get him to treat you to that sometime. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Ladies not. and gentlemen, Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I screw up b badly. What I did is I uh, the last uh, video we did, uh, I uh, set it uh, to start streaming. And so it went out over the internet, right? The old internet. But there's no way I can get it till tomorrow when it becomes a permanent file and I can then download the picture. So they're, they can watch, well, well, they can't watch it anymore, right? They can, they can only have saw it live. Well, I, I have it set so that I, everybody can watch it, yeah. Right. It's so they saw there. whatever it was we did. Yeah, I might be able to figure out a way of getting it down now, but this is just its ridiculous. So anyway, you lost all of what we were talking about, unless you saw it live, where Chuck was talking about the hooker flight from, because you worked as a conflict well, resolution kind of person at the airport, and you said there, all the hookers on one day a week, what day? Friday. Friday's about 2 o'clock on Southwest. Now, do they come back at the same time? 
Sunday, uh, Sunday evenings usually. Now, why do they Monday go down morning. there? They go down to Vegas because they just walk the streets in Vegas, or what do they do? No, they work work at strip joints and various other locations. I see, and then they 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 work in the strip joints. Yeah, and the strip joints allow them to go around. Shall we say well, drumming those, up business? Uh, those strip joints in Vegas are a little different than your average strip joint. Uh, they're, I want to say they're high end. They're not so high end, but there's activities that can take place that are of an illegal nature in probably 49 other states. Say that again. I so said there are activities that can take place in those strip joints that are probably illegal in 49 other states. Well, like what? Well, you can have sex and stuff in private rooms and things. Oh, really? And oh, yeah. And the state doesn't stop them? Apparently not. They tried to get rid of the whole prostitution thing a couple of times, but, you know, like gun control laws around here, you know, hey, we've been doing this forever, we get to keep doing it. Well, my question is, of all these hookers on the plane, what percentage of them would you have sex with them? No, none. Really? Yeah. Pretty, I, pretty skeezy? No, no. Oh, they're beautiful. These people are just, they dress stunningly for work, and then they climb on a plane and go to Vegas. I'm more like your mom's Mabley type. What? That's what you want? Yeah. I think it's a much better story if you have sex. See, with I've never, as I as I say, I had this friend Dennis Hoff own the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, and I could have sex with anybody I wanted to there, right? Dennis yeah. would comp me half the price because that was the half he would take from them. So the other half I had to pay because they needed to. They didn't just right, right, right. want to have sex with me because I'm Dennis's friend, and Dennis didn't want to pay the price. Okay, sure. But given that, and given all the times I just went over to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch and sat in the lobby and talked with Dennis yeah. and talked with the girls and so on, I never had sex. He, he used to like to brag about me, that I'm the only person he knows that's come to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch where he's made this offer and I haven't taken him up on it. Yeah, I, um, I, I took my mom there a couple of times. Yeah. And, you know, when you first moved out here, Everybody wanted a T-shirt or a coffee mug or something from the place. And so she would be like, hey, Charlie, can you go get me this? Can you go get me that? And I'm like, why don't you come with me, Mom? You ever been in a whorehouse? And she's like, I can't go in there. And I go, sure you can. And and her and the madam and all the girls would hang out. <laughs> I think we'd be on our way to Carson, and we'd always stop in and see the girls. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. a nice place. I mean, you've been there. It's, it's a nice, uh, very nice place. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, he he did a nice job with it. Oops. He made it into, you know, a business. Okay. Yeah, oh, it was a business, all right. He used to be a real estate broker. And he said this was yeah. just another version of the same thing, you know. He was selling yeah. real estate. Um, but I just, you know, I just never, the idea of a hooker, just never appealed to me. Like, have you ever had sex with a hooker? No. I, I, I sim, that's stupid of me to ask you. No. You, I like to talk to them. Oh, you have I don't it. like to. No. Oh, okay. I, I, I just like thought. talking to them. I like discussing their business with them and how they get to a, you know, transactional thing going on. I went with a friend once to the Mustang Ranch. Huh? Okay, and uh, he, all the time. he he immediately picked a woman and went off with her. And, right, and I figured, well, as long as I'm here, this is an experience I've never had. All right. So you. So I picked a woman, and we went to the room, and I think what she did, she uh, she uh, 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 filleted me. I'm saying that so I can't lose money on this uh, interview. Uh, uh, he, she, he, filleted will not send will not off. Make the, the, it'll make the cut. It'll, it, yeah, it won't trigger their uh, algorithm. Um, so anyway, uh, 
I so this woman filleted me basically, and I just found it so unsexy. I mean, there was nothing about it that even resembled what I considered sex. It was just you know a transaction, and an yeah. action, and that was it. And I just right. yeah. uh, I, no, I, no, no, no. I and all those years that I hadn't gone to hookers, it simply. Um, um, how can I, what's the word I'm looking for? It validated my opinion, okay? And I did not enjoy it in the least. And then I was back out there in the lobby waiting for my friend who was still going at it, you know. Yeah, I don't I don't get how that works. I just don't. Yeah, but it never, I, I just, I, it, never, it never appealed to me. Because to me, part of sex is the pursual. And then the, you know, the what you know what the pursual and the uh, and the accommodation the woman going oh hey yeah sure let's do that you know that it, it, that was the part that I always liked right you know? uh, uh, well and you gotta you have to have some kind of closer than random person in room relationship with them yeah but there's no know? pursual here you know there's no validation of you as a person okay. When oh, no, I, your money. Though. So when a woman wants to have sex with me because she finds me attractive or entertaining or whatever, that's that's enough for me. You know, I'm fine. Now you don't have that at the whorehouse. I'm afraid. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> it's transactional. Well, they do have they do have a thing they do called the girlfriend experience. How much is that? I don't know how much it is. I never did it, but it's supposed to be more like she's your girlfriend, and there's more accommodation, you know. <laughs> now I had a friend. I had a friend died many years ago. Paul Montgomery was the uh, right. I we were all at his funeral. You were at his funeral too. Yes, I was. Uh, you and I. I think you and I wrote the eulogies in the book they handed out. Oh really? I can't even remember that funeral. I mean, it was yeah, so depressing. Yeah, bad. Here was the only guy in the, my my whole history who really believed enough in me to finance me. In other right. words, to say, okay, let's start a online TV network. Right. And that's what we did, and I was in charge of that. Yeah. You know, and um, he was just a great guy. But uh, and you knew him, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah very well. Met him. Uh, he was uh, the, the he was at one time the one of the heads of uh, New Tech that came out with the video toaster and then later on he left that and went and started playing Incorporated where they made a thing called the Trinity which was like this big box version of the video toaster that did even more than the video toaster could because in a box it was more powerful. Yep. Uh, so anyway. Uh, he was. Uh, it was very depressing to me when he died because all of a sudden I didn't have a job anymore. You know, right? Because the people, all those guys. Well, the people that were left there, they had all their own ideas of what they wanted to do. Right. You know. I think Kiki's in uh, Sacramento. Huh? Kiki Stockhammer. Yeah. She's in Sacramento now. Yeah, yeah. What's she doing? Um. Last I had that conversation. Kiki Stockhammer. Let's, ex that. let's explain Kiki Stockhammer before we go any further. <laughs> she was a spokesperson for New Tech. Right. Okay. If you saw a video on running the video toaster, who was there? Kiki was showing it to you. Who, she, mm -hmm. who went out to the conventions and became this kind of star spokesperson yeah. for New Tech because she was a fairly good looking woman. Uh, not exactly my type, but you know she was a very attractive woman. Very friendly, nice to be around. Friendly, terrific person, terrific person, Big and cookies. and so she became her job is literally being a spokesperson for her company. So she became a spokesperson for New Tech, and then when that was over, she went and fought. What well, was she followed Paul to play Incorporated in Sacramento, and then when he died. Few years later, um, she was brought on as a spokesman again for New Tech when it moved to Texas. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, for a while. Now, I don't know. So what's she doing now? Last I saw, she had that um, Star Wars uh, cover band. Oh, that was that was going long before. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was still. It's. I think it's still going. They're still doing a Star Wars cover band. She's still doing <laughs> that. Yeah. And they what they what, what I can't remember what they played. I don't either, but I remember their outfits. That was what I. They dressed up looking. It was a weird mesh between Star yeah. Trek, I think, and Lost. In so Space. she's not at New Tech any longer. I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, I don't see her on any of their, you know, their promos yeah. and stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have talked to her a few times, but I nothing lately. I run into her somewhere. Nice lady. Nice lady. Yeah, yeah. Oh, swell people. But anyway, where were we? Where, what, what brought us to that? Um, we, we skipped past uh, Bokers we, and Kiki Stockhammer. And, and by the way, in case you're listening and you're a friend of Kiki's, we weren't equating her with the hookers. No, 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 no. We're friends. I think if you if you called Kiki today and said Chuck Farnham, Alex Bennett, she'd go, "Oh, they're friends of mine." Yeah, I know those guys. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Oh, I wonder what she's looking like these days. I don't know. Like for instance, have you seen Grace Slick lately? Yeah. <laughs> you know, any of you, you know. any of you young women out there who might be watching this, although I doubt it. Okay, who are relishing in the fact that you're pretty, you're pretty foxy. You know, you're pretty terrific. When you reach seventy, eh, forget it. You aren't going to be able to make it on your looks. Okay, so so learn to make it in some other way now. You look like her and Ann uh, Ann Wilson from Heart look very similar. Is the fat now. one? Is she the fat one? Yeah. Yes. But she's lost weight, I think, recently. Is she? I think she yo-yos. Yeah. Well, that was a. Kinda I always like felt sorry for her because Stevie Nicks, same thing. Stevie Nicks is fat. Stevie Nicks was a. She looked like a, a blimp at one point. Now she's kind of came back down a oh, little okay. bit. Okay. All right. But Stevie Nicks, boy, that was a hot woman. You know. I think she fell apart after seventy-seven. I think. Well, the thing is. And I'm proof of this. You never keep your looks. You How know. much coke can you do? Well, that isn't a matter of coke. Problem. You know, it's you know the worst enemy of all of us, gravity. Aging. Gravity. Everything that used to go up now goes down. That explains why I can't see my penis. My stomach's in the way. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I can't see mine any longer because they did all those operations on my prostate and. It just goes, eh, I don't have any reason to exist. Is it turtling on you, is it? Huh? Is it turtling on you? Yeah, it's turtling on me. <laughs> yeah, that's what Mike does. You know. People going, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not even sure it's down there except every once in a while my leg gets wet. Well, you know, I mean, the thing was that when it was really operating at full function. Heat capacity. Uh, I never remember a day without some kind of a par partial erection. You know, but and then all of a sudden they go in there and they they uh, put in the seeds in my prostate, yeah. and they radiate my prostate, and it's like they they put it up on a, a punching bag thing and just went, blah, 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 blah. and now I go to my um, urologist and he does the finger thing and he says, ah oh, yeah, it's really flat now. Yeah, I've got a flat prostate. It's supposed to be, but but that does affect the rest of you. You know, right, so. right. Well, mine they stuck all those needles in it, and now it just just lays there. We, we we is this a discussion we should be having? I don't know. I don't. Why not? So. Let's get back to the hookers. We'll get like seventy people in here, and we're gonna all have this conversation. Saddest place in America, the urologist's office. Um. And also, if you go to most urologist office, people waiting, the males waiting, all old, uh, all old. Yeah, yeah, and they're staring at the ground. Yeah. They're all looking down. Nobody's making eye contact. Well, I, the I went to this office. place where this doctor was part of a, 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 a practice that 
literally in the waiting room, there were at least 20, 30 old guys just sitting there waiting to see their urologist. Yeah. You know. that, because that's who goes to see the urologist. You know, I mean, I can't remember ever going. Well, I remember going to a urologist when I was younger, but what did I go to him for? I really? Can't re- I can't remember now. It wasn't anything, you know. anything really important I don't think yeah why would you even need to go yeah I had this one doctor though this is a funny one every time I would go to him with something he would say well lean over and they would stick his finger up my rectum see there's another term that won't flag the algorithms nice Uh, and and um, every time I would go to him he would say, I could go to him and say, I've got a cold. He'd say, okay, here's uh, some medicine yeah. for that. And by the way, before you leave, bend over. Right. And he would do that. And I'm thinking to myself, number one, he's not a urologist. He's upselling you. He's upselling you. <laughs> and, and I finally, one day I said, every time I come in here, you stick your finger up my rectum. What's that all about? He says, oh, come on, you like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I remember another doctor. You want to know the worst doctor I ever went to in my life? Everybody, I'm, I'm, I need, I need to go to a doctor every now and then. Usually, it was for like the clap or something like that. Right. right? Sure. And uh, you couldn't just go to the doctor. You had to go to the doctor. You had to get right. to know the doctor. So anyway. Um, he, a friend of mine, Bruce David, was at Screw Magazine, said, well, down the street, there's the $10 doctor. And those were the days where I didn't have insurance or anything, so you had to pay for this stuff. And I went, $10 doctor? He says, yeah. Yeah. So I go down there, and there's a lineup to see this guy, right? Of course. And uh, I finally get in to see him, and he, I can't remember what was wrong with me, and he I don't know, he gave me some medicine or something and sent me home, and uh, it didn't go away. So I went back to him, paid another $10, he gave me another pill, I went home, it didn't go away. Finally, go back to him, give him another $10, he gives me another pill, it still didn't go away. I finally went to a regular doctor who took care of the problem, all right? And when I talked to Bruce David about it, he said, what do you expect for $10? Jesus. You know, so uh, that was the ten dollar doctor. I always was was curious about who's that guy from the Hate Ashbury Free Clinic. Oh, uh, oh, oh! You mean uh, um, uh, he was my psychiatrist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his name? Um, uh, oh, gee. Now you, you see, this is what people do to me. They yeah. uh, they ask me a name. And then I'm pressured to come out with it. And at my age, I can't come out with it because I'm being pressured. Otherwise, it it was called Dr. Hippocrates. I remember that guy being real nice and at the same time kind of weird. Well, he was my shrink. Right. He didn't do anything for me. But, you know, he was a nice guy and an old friend, and I should know his name. He was known as Dr. Hippocrates, and it was, uh, oh, God, I forget it. He was like the big guy, the director of the Hate Ashbury Free Clinic. Yeah, and he um, he actually he wrote a uh, a column in the underground newspapers called Dear Doctor Hippocrates, which people would ask him medical questions, and he would answer them, and he was very good. He was really yeah. terrific. I mean, he, he he felt like he looked weird, but when he talked, he talked like the smartest guy you'd ever ever run into. Yeah, he like knew everything. Right. And anyway, in later years, I needed a shrink, and I, he was that's what he did for a living. And I went to him, and he was my shrink for maybe two years, something like that. Yeah. You know? uh, and, yeah. Um, oh, I like God, the name is just floating right here. I know. I'm you mine, know? too. Well, maybe is he we'll, still around, or is he dead like everybody else? I think he's still around. Wow. Well. You know. Good folks. <laughs> yeah, no, he was terrific. I liked him. Yeah, I thought so too. He was a good time, that guy. What was his Like name? you could ask him anything and he knew the answer. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I mean, he was just very good. He wasn't he, like Dean Adele. Well, he, yeah. Well, Dean Adele was pretty good. If anybody remembers Dean Adele, he was a doctor on radio. You podiatrist. Know. He was a podiatrist? Yeah. But he was good at giving information. Yeah. And very... He, had a, he, huh? He was kind of general. He would give you kind of a general look at... I mean, if you're going to ask him about a bunion, no problem, but... You get involved in the heart, and he'd go general on you. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. Are you really going to ask a doctor on the radio for information about your problem? You know? Yeah, good point. Yeah. So. That makes some sense. But Dr. Dean Adele was very uh, famous at one point. What happened to him? Oh, yeah. Is he still alive? I don't know. I mean, probably. I don't know. All those guys are behind us, so they might still be with us. I mean, I, 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 I you know, um, I, I do know one thing. Let me see here. I, now I'll try it. I do know one thing. Alex huh. Bennett is still alive? <laughs> our boy. Yeah, our, our boy. Our boy. Uh, Gilbert. God. Yeah. So funny. And so disturbed. I, I've been watching a lot of him on YouTube the last yeah. couple of days. Watched all his sets on Letterman, and then uh, I start. Uh, they had a thing of all his roasts that he did over at Comedy Central. Oh wow! And he took it seriously. They were everybody oh, yeah. else was you know taffy. Okay, it's Comedy Central. It's not exactly. Where you can be filthy, but he got Television. filthy. He got just downright right. filthy. He went into a whole thing about how big Pam Anderson's vagina was. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I know that bit. Was, yeah. Well, I, I do the same thing with Norm McDonald all the time. What watch Norm? You take take Norm stuff and get it all back to back to back. And Norm, I never was into Norm, and then all of a sudden. About the time he died, I started watching his stuff, and he was phenomenal. He was just phenomenal. I when they, I can tell I got a good Norm story. I was minding my own business, and I won't give out the guy's name, but I get this phone call from a guy that you and I both know, and he's uh, let's say uh, managing a uh, yeah, comedy in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and and he goes. Chuck, I got to talk to you. And I'm like, sure, man, what are you up to? And he goes, no, you don't understand. Norm's in town. I go, yeah. And and the hotel called. They were always stay at the Hotel Richelieu. Remember that place? Yeah, yeah. They stay at the Richelieu. He goes, the hotel called. Norm's a problem. And I go, well, what could the problem be? It's just Norm. He goes, no, I went over there. There's 200 jugs of urine all over the floor. Norm refuses to use the restroom <laughs> in the hotel because he's afraid of it. And and he keeps calling downstairs for more jugs to put the <laughs> urine in and to have the, uh, have the uh, uh, wow. housekeeping take them away. Wow. And he goes, they won't touch it, so I have to go over there now. And it's, it's horrible, Chuck, he's crazy. I go, he's Norm. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Yeah. It's a good place to end. Yeah, good place Norm to Norman. end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my old friend, Chuck Farnham. A lot of fun to talk to. Thanks, Thanks Chuck. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is Gabnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, that's kind of our little special show that we did tonight, uh, uh, pre-recorded. All a lot of interviews with people that we know and love. Okay, I'm trying to adjust things at the same time here, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, we didn't have a lot of people watching it, but uh, here's the reason why I did it. Um, last Friday we did a show, and only. Two people called the show. Now, granted, one of them happened to be uh, Josh uh, Wheeler, uh, who is a very intelligent guy and knows a lot about uh, 
TV about about uh, uh, politics and uh, the nature of the Supreme Court and the history of America, and so it it was an okay hour, but I was absolutely disappointed that nobody called except for he and Jeff. And Jeff always calls and always very loyal about it. And I really think he was uh, terrific. Anyway, uh, uh, but nobody was calling. And I just said to myself, why am I doing this? You know, I, to begin with, at my age, I, I get pretty tired this time of night. Uh, and I still do this thing. Every night I'm out here for you people and yet I don't, you know, we're, we're down to like, you know, two people on a Friday night. Usually Friday night was our best night. So I kind of felt I was really pissed off. I, I, I was trying to decide whether I was even going to continue doing the ramble or not. And uh, I suddenly felt, okay, what I'll do is I will take like I, I the one thing I didn't want to stop doing is I love doing things with Lori and I love doing things with Albert Reynoso and I love doing things with Chuck Farnham and there's several other people I would like to do stuff with as well but I don't want to suddenly say to them hey we're not doing it anymore thanks a lot goodbye so I wanted to come up with a format where we could play these interviews and uh, and do them uh uh, like we did tonight, and uh, so we're we're I, what I was what I thought I would test was that. Now as to whether it was successful or not, I have no idea. Um, uh, we don't have as many people watching it tonight, but we'll have to see how many people watch it in reruns throughout the day. Anyway, that was the um, that was the genesis of of this thing tonight. And uh, I, you know, I just don't know. I mean, I'll have to see tomorrow night what happens tomorrow night on Friday if we have enough of an audience. If we don't, uh, I'm just going to call it quits on the ramble. That's it. And what I will do is one day a week I will do a show like you saw tonight. Uh, and I will do the Monday show, which I love and a lot of people call into. And a lot of people watch. It's a very popular show. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Why should I work so hard? Why should, and then to get the insult of uh, nobody watching, or nobody calling. I don't know that nobody was watching, but nobody was calling. Oddly enough, we had a lot more people than we're, than we're getting tonight. All of a sudden, because I'm live and I'm talking to you, uh, we're getting uh, listeners uh, <laughs> to this, uh, which makes no sense at all. I mean, I don't think I'm entertaining at all anymore. Uh, but, uh, and we're not even talking to people, okay? There's no talking to them at all. So, you know, that's that. Anyway, uh, so that's the story of how this show came about. And what I might do is, if, if I don't continue with the ramble, is do this, Alex Bennett and Friends, and have all the interviews I do every week uh, with friends and so on and associates. And uh, I still got to figure out what to do with bubbles. But outside of that, we're, you know, we've got all the people that uh, we're going to have. Let me see here. I think I could probably uh, start playing uh, the uh, theme. Where is it? Okay. See, when I do the show, don't do the show the way I'd normally do it. I get all bungled up here not knowing what to do next but there's the theme song yeah uh anyway i wanted to keep going straight on till uh till midnight new york time because i didn't want to throw um amy manuel off uh, uh and have her say wait a minute why is my 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 show starting already because she has it set up so it uh, it's on a thing called a butt which just sits there and waits for me to sign off, and then it signs itself on, and that would throw her all off. So I figured I would just keep going until uh, midnight. Anyway, listen, we'll see you again tomorrow night. We'll be back here with our usual uh, situation of people uh, calling in and talking to us, and we hope we'll have a decent-sized uh, crowd calling, and I won't have to suddenly say, 
hey, fuck it, I don't need to do this. I'm, I'm too young for this. Anyway, <laughs> thanks so much. We'll see you again. Uh, Amy Manuel is next with The Intersection. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.